Uh, let us turn our Bibles to Acts 13, uh, verses 1 to 3. Uh, we'll read in response to style. So, uh, now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, uh, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, uh, Lucius of Cyrene, Manion, a long, lifelong friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. Amen. Uh, let us watch a video. It's about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. And can you uh, make the sound coming too? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm just Yeah, I'm just not done for like kinda mad, kinda like Oh why? Like people rejecting us and people that are from other countries that just came here. They're like Yeah, but like it's more easy and easier. I get more like non shy. Okay, Michael. Hi. Forum, forum. Oh. So, like, I'm happy that, like, those, like, some, like, other religious people, like, listen to us and, like, actually, like, understand what we're doing and, like, unlike, like, some other people, like, just didn't have five minutes to talk about the gospel. And, yeah. Okay, Sam. Also to Michael's point, um, there's a few people that just ignored us and just walked away without even even looking at us. Some people didn't even look at us. and But I was very happy at the end that people opened their heart to listen to our message. Yes, yes. And they actually accepted. Amen. I'm getting recorded too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so you can me, stop the video um, here. He's making long forum. When everyone goes like short, he knows we're recording, so he make it long. So stop there. We don't need to watch it, Josiah. <laughs> you'll watch on my YouTube. My YouTube, you'll hear what Josiah share. Um, so right before Josiah, it's Sam. Uh, although Sam's not here today, uh, we went out. To, I was team up with Sam, and we were rejected the whole hour. And while we were rejected, we saw Josiah as very excited to share in gospel to others. And Josiah was like, oh, like this. But in the beginning of our camp, Josiah was the one who couldn't share the gospel. When I asked him, can you share the gospel to this guy, Josiah like, no, 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 pastor, stop, stop, no, no. And that was Josiah, but now that he was very excited to share about the gospel, elaborate on it. And she, she's like proclaiming gospel. And watching that, Sam got... Uh, discouraged because the whole entire hour when we were rejected we saw Josiah sharing so Sam gave us a truth which is not truth Sam said pastor maybe people don't like our appearance I'm like what do you mean it's because I'm not six feet tall I'm like Sam that's not and he was looking at me and I'm like I, I, I say it's not that we are rejected because we're not six tall, but he was looking at me up and down, where I'm like, yeah, that's right. I'm not six feet tall too. I mean, all of us are proving Sam is right. Only six feet tall guy, Josiah, sharing gospel, and we are all rejected, right? That's what we call the disbelief. Isn't it? That is disbelief. I told him, no, it's not. But he, Sam looked at me, and I look at him, even when I say it's not, looking at me, I know I'm not six feet tall. So I'm like, uh, there's no way I can disprove that Sam is wrong. And that is disbelief. Our disbelief is really correct many times. Don't you see that? 
your disbelief is really accurate. And Sam, at the end, you know, I told Sam, Sam, that's why we got to pray. When it's not happening, we got to pray. And, you know, Sam's saying, we'll not six feet tall. And there's nothing I can say against it, right? When people are giving you such disbelief, you're saying Jesus is the Christ. But what they're saying is, but how long am I going to suffer? When does God take this problem away? When? You know, Jesus talked about the kingdom of God for 40 days. And what did they ask Jesus? When are you going to restore this nation? Or you talk about the kingdom, but when? Look at us. We are colonized. Look at us. We are so sad. Look at us. We are suffering. But what are you talking about? Is kingdom of God really necessary for our lives? Our disbelief sounds so great and sounds so right. And that's the characteristic of disbelief. When you have disbelief, you don't necessarily reject, I don't believe in God. It's not that we don't believe in God. It is that we partially believe in God. That we put more weight of our faith on our experience, on our knowledge, on our thoughts, more than God. Disbelief is not me become atheist. Disbelief, you are a believer. But your faith is not on God. Your faith is something else. And disbelief, you may not realize that is your disbelief because that's how we've been living with. Right? That's been my knowledge. That's been my ideology. That's been what formed who I am. So disbelief is really deceptive. It is, this is not telling you you're not a believer because you're, even with the disbelief, look at where you are. We are still at the church. Even with the disbelief, we might pray. Even with the disbelief, we can be a praise leaders or praise members. If, even with the disbelief, we give offering too. So we do not acknowledge. Many times we're falling into disbelief. And we do not also see ourselves how disbelief has led our life to where we are. But we don't acknowledge this is my disbelief. Because we are simply at the church. Look at Judges 21, 25. It says, in those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Your own eyes, what is right is what is, your, what is right in your life. That is disbelief. They still worship Israel's, are people of God. Everyone acknowledges they are people of God. But we do not acknowledge our disbelief. There are two types of giving up. You know, when we talk about gospel, we talk about many times, even last week, Christ must increase, we must decrease. We talk about give up, right? We talk about I must be crucified. So many times, there are two types of giving up. The first type of giving up is literally you gave up on, you gave up on your spiritual problem. That means you don't even want to solve it anymore. That means you gave up on it. That means you don't care about it anymore. If I'm going through depression, I say I, I give up on my depression. You know what that means? That means first type of giving up is literally I'm giving up on my depression. I don't care now. If I'm depressed, that's who I am. You're starting to accept your spiritual problem as who you are. That's the first time of giving up. In that, there's no thanksgiving. In that giving up, there's no victory. In that giving up, there's no triumph. In that giving up, literally, there's no gratefulness. But second type of giving up is that you know God has told or God, God really has a plan in it. So you really hope in the Lord. Even when you're in the depression, it's because of me. Even in the second type of giving up, even with the depression, you're not sad. You could be very grateful. You could be very thankfulness. Why? Because you know God has hidden his plan in my spiritual problem. But many times we are confused which giving up we're in. Many times I see remnants and many people falling into first type of giving up. They literally gave up. Parents giving up on their kids. 
they say they believe in the Lord, God will do it. No, when I see them, they literally gave up on their kids. So there's no happiness. There's no thanksgiving. There's no gratefulness. There's no expectation. There's no hope in it. Those who really hope in the Lord, there it, it includes kingdom of God. The throne comes upon your heart. And it overcomes what you see, what you hear. So may we, falling into the true faith, do not confuse, do not be confused of your giving up and your trust. Trust in the Lord is literally different from your falling into disbelief. May you not compromise your spiritual problem that's been repeated. Many are compromising, saying that this is my problem. No, if, if you find God's true plan, if His plan in it, it consists of the kingdom of God. When kingdom of God comes upon you, Satan is running away. There is beauty and thanksgiving, gratefulness hidden in the kingdom of God. So are you giving, are you falling into disbelief or are you falling into true faith? Many times disbelief. You know, uh, I just realized today uh, I was taking number one. I'm not always taking number two. Sometimes I take number one too. I was in the restroom taking number two, standing up. My son came in front of me looking at me like this. I'm like, what are you doing? Can you go away? And then I was asked, I asked God, 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 what is your desire, right? And then, you know, while we were praising, he came next to me, touching the mic, tried to take off the cover of the mic, and he had spit on my iPad. He bothers me so much. You know what I realized? That's what we do to God. Isn't it? And what are you supposed to do if your son does that to you? You got to ignore but if you want it to be respect, respected, I'm sorry. You're falling into Genesis chapter 3, 6, and 11. We say we do things for God. Or we want to be close to Him. But everything we do in our own way is disbelief. We bother God a lot. Sometimes, maybe it's us. Stop His work that can overcome my limitation. Right? So what do we have to start with? We don't start from me. We don't start from my plan. We don't start from what I am good at. We're starting from God's desire. Now that I'm, I'm serving our remnants, the first and second graders, uh, as a teacher, the most thing that I do in our class is this. I ignore them. Don't respect first and second graders. <laughs> We were having bokumba fried rice, right, on Tuesday. And then everyone, my kids, like first, second, they're always, when are we going to eat lunch? After, okay, after, after studying this, after five minutes, they're asking, okay, are we done? After five minutes, are we done? When are we? So we were, they were so excited for lunch. So I'm like, it's a lunch time. Let's go there. Like, yeah. And then we went, right? And we were all sitting on the table. All of a sudden, one of the, uh, one of my students saying that, all of a sudden, right after he saw the food, he's like, I'm not in the mood of eating this. Why ask him? You were so excited. He's like, no, I'm not anymore. What kind of mood is this? Your mood swing is too, too big. You're going through anxiety problem. You're going through bipolar disease. You're very depressed and angry. Why? And he's like, I'm not in the mood. And I told him, confess Christ and eat. He's like, Oh, I'm not in a mood. Okay, ignore your feeling and eat. And you start to eat, right? You know why he didn't want to eat fried rice? Because he doesn't eat vegetables. Okay, let us respect him. Okay, you don't want, you're not in the mood. Let's not eat then. Good. If he let, we let him not eat veggies forever in his life. Respect him. What's going to happen to him? You guys respect yourself too much. <laughs> Amen. Aren't you guys respecting each other too much? Sometimes, if you're couples, it's good to ignore. Right? I know that sometimes brought up conflict. But that is a way into the gospel. Right? Always respect is not the answer. First, second grade, they're so filled with Genesis chapter 3, 6. And pastor talked about today. Does your baby ask you, when, I, when can I cry, mom? They don't. 
They cry whenever they want to, whenever they need. Very self-centered. Don't respect them. And you are just growing up. You're grown, and you're simply older than them, which means we might not be able to carry what God really desires, even right now. Maybe what we're doing is many times we bother him a lot. You know, we try to fix him. We try to correct God as we pursue my own intention, right? But our star shouldn't be from Genesis chapter 3. Our star should from what is God's desire. That was our message, first message. What is God's desire? God's desire for him to be with us. Desire to be with us. Because we'll be lost regardless. Because we'll be for, forgotten regardless. Because we'll fail. We're in this destiny and digesters that we cannot break. Because Satan will destroy us. Because we're so away from God. God says, I want to be with you. I know you're not even looking for me. Many times, are we? Are we even seeking God? Or do we seek God? We don't. And sometimes we disregard him. And we don't, wanna, we don't even want to hear him. And we simply ask God, can you respect me? No, if you're eating your food without veggie for the rest of your life, you'll be sick. So confess Christ, open your mouth, eat it. Right? Ignore Eurgen's chapter 3, 6, and 11. Accept Christ that triumphs over everything. That is why God is invincible. And Pastor Shin today told us that is why his children are invincible. Because his word is invincible. Christ is invincible. So today, when we look at look at the 400 years of slavery that Israel has faced. 400 years of slavery. What does that mean? You're imprinted with their culture, their food. You're becoming one of them. You're imprinted with disbelief. You're imprinted. And here in slavery, you might be happy because you found some money. You might be happy because you got some position. But you are in slavery. 400 years now that you're starting to forget you are in slavery. You don't even think of, I need to be out of slavery. Because it's been 400 years. What stopped them from slavery? God's desire. What is God's desire? Get out. Worship giving the blood sacrifice. When they start to hold on to God's desire. It was the end of their slavery. And it was the beginning of their new life. Before they go into the 70 years. Of captivity to Babylon. It's a road you'd never want to go, but God is letting you to go through for you to hold on to God's desire. He gave Israel the desire the virgin will have a son, his name will be Emmanuel. Which means God is with us. The problem is not that you are in slavery or captives or colonized. The problem is we lost, hold on to what God desired the most. You know, many times, aren't we thinking this way? I want a better job. I want a better house. I want a better boss. Or aren't we thinking that I want to have better children? I want to have better pastor. I want to have better church. Aren't we so obsessed with better, better, and better, better when we are forgetting God's perfect time schedule that is at now with us from where we are today? Now and today. Isn't there God's plan now and today from where we are? Are, why are we always seeking God's answer at a better place? 
Instead of looking at his plan in the slavery, in the captivities, what is God's plan right now that Israel, the early church, is now about to go into 250 years of colonization? They didn't know it will last 250 years. So they asked, Lord, when are you going to restore my nation? But what was God's, what God's answer? He talked about the kingdom of God for 40 days. Disregarding their situation, which is healing. Which is answer to you. Because all you think about is not about God's desire, but yourself. And because that, you've been colonized. And now it's going to go about 250 years. And what did God ask you guys who he is? And what did Peter confess? What is God's desire? God wants us to realize the covenant is all. Christ is all. Gospel is all. Problem is not where you are. The problem is that we don't see God's plan right now at this problem. At this difficulties, we don't ask God's plan at where we are. We always expect something better than this place, better than this problem, something more than this. No, what is God's plan right now at this time at your problem that you're going through right now? So 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and 2, today is favorite time of the grace. Today, it's time for you to come before the throne. When are we come to pray? Today, where we are, right now, at this time. Um, since I'm a pastor, one of, I think one of the downs, down, um, is that right? One of the downward, one of the anjoon uh, jump, one of, how do I say that? Should I just speak in Korean right now, starting from now on? So, Downside of the pastor is that you don't have mentor once you become a pastor. I mean, you get to talk to senior pastor, but not much. So the one mentor that I have is my father. Well, even because my father knows who I am, right? And he's a pastor. And I ask him a lot of things. You know, many times pastor, pastorship is in a place where you give the answer. So where do I ask my question? Too. So it's my dad, right? And whenever I ask him a question of so many things going on or situation and happening, he's always telling me one thing. So isn't God with you? So why aren't you praying? Why aren't you praying? Oh, dad, but this happened. So why aren't you praying? I prayed, but, but why aren't you praying more? I prayed two days, so pray more. Why aren't you holding on to the gospel? Aren't you in God's sovereignty? You know, sometimes I told, I call my dad, Dad, I'm so mad. Like, why? This so effed up person is so out of his mind that I want to kill him. And he's like, so why aren't you praying? So isn't that, aren't you outside of God's plan? Are you God's, outside of God's plan? Or are you inside of God's plan? And he's being keep telling me, why aren't you praying? And there was a conversation that I had this week with my dad. And today when I listened to Pastor Shin's message, my spiritual father, what was the beginning of our life? Prayer. That's how I'm confirmed by the word of God. How I received the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So what we do from where we are. Instead of looking at the pathetic path you've been walked on. Or the pathetic path you're walking right now. Instead of expect something better than today. Why not we look at the greatest answer. Greatest, greatest reality. Which is Christ. So right now at this time where we are. What God is doing is this. He is asking us into prayer. Having the true relationship. Restore your relationship with me. Pastor gave us the word will. With Emmanuel and oneness. I am with you. I am with everyone. I am, and I am with everything. 
through prayer, this is what we experience. Today, today, let us change our spiritual DNA. Amen. Instead of changing everything around me, why not we start to change ourselves first with prayer, power of prayer. When they hold on to covenant, finally the end of their slavery, where did they let where was they led to? They was they were led to 40 years. Of wilderness. You are saved once forever, but now your imprint and root and nature will take some time to be changed. So God allow you 40 years of wilderness. And here, Israel's their spiritual DNA has been replaced from self-centered to tabernacle. It's ridiculous because what you need to worry about is what to eat, what to drink right now in the wilderness. But what God is making them is how he's training and forming and, de and designing their not life to live centered around not what you eat, not what you drink, not what you will accomplish, but centered around the tabernacle. He's changing our spiritual DNA. What happened into 70 years of captivity in the Babylon? What did they do? Daniel earned his position for five years. He was prime minister for five years. He held strong authority in his hand. But that wasn't his goal. And also that wasn't God's goal. God's goal for him is God changing his spiritual DNA. So whenever Daniel prayed, look at Daniel chapter 6, 10. Where is he looking at? He's looking at Jerusalem. He opened the window and he prayed. Not only him, he would tell all his people, open your window, open your place towards Jerusalem, towards the church, towards the tabernacle. You're captivated, which means you must worry about what to do for the future. Yet... Instead of worrying about it, may you right now at this time looking at Jerusalem and hope in the Lord. That was answer to where you are today. What happened 250 years of colonization to Rome? God changed their spirituality. By built them a church. And Matthew chapter 24, a 21, 13. Jesus said, this house should be called a house of prayer. We are the temple of God, aren't we? Our house, myself, is house called a prayer, house of a prayer. This is who we are. This is our beginning. If your life is now saved with Christ alone, let us walk the rest of your life with also Christ alone. So remnants, we're given an authority and right to pray to God. That's a special gift that's only given to save the children of God. Even so many religions, they are proclaiming their prayer. How come we are losing our spiritual power? We lost, we lost our spiritual eyes. We lost our spiritual uh, aspect of our life. Many other religions losing their spiritual life, is, it's not a problem to God. But us losing is bringing disaster to this age. When I talk to remnants, when I talk to some people, they, people are raging. You know what the biggest problem of this age is? People are saying it is atmosphere, climate changing. Or some are saying it's a gun shooting. Some are saying it's drug. Some are saying education. Some are saying it's money. Many has different problems, and they're asking the different answers. 
if we are losing our spiritual power, if we close our spiritual eyes, who's going to tell them the source of all problem is fundamental problem? Who is able to proclaim, hey, that is why Jesus is the Christ. The answer to climate change isn't it Christ. I believe it's Christ. The answer to gun shooting is Christ. The answer to education is Christ. Answer to financial problems is Christ. Answer to your anxiety is Christ. Your answer should not be changed in any situation to today where we are right now. Let us enjoy what we're given. Change our spirituality. Forty years of wilderness. Look how God changed their life. They with a prayer began to obey. First Psalm chapter 15 verse 22. It says, Obey, obedience is better than burnt offering. We are now, with changed our spiritual DNA, able to obey God. They obey the Lord, which means they went into the wilderness. Not 40 years to suffer, but 40 years to let all around Israel to hear how God is working with Israel. It's not 40 years of suffering anymore. It's 40 years of proclamation of gospel to all nations around Israel. Look at Babylon. Without the covenant, it is dark time of Israel. But with the covenant, it is 70 years of our time given to us to proclaim gospel to the greatest nation that are spreading the spiritual problem to everywhere. Is God making mistake that he has called you guys to the United States? Or are we here given the opportunity to bring, bring the gospel to the greatest nation of this age? Are we here to suffer? Are we here to proclaim gospel? Now, God is changing our perspective, our thoughts, and our mindset. He gives us true discernment of what God desires. 250 years of colonization. What time was this? It was time to proclaim Christ to the Rome that spreads the spiritual problem to every future generation. This, this is what I saw and experienced when I was in LA, also in Chicago, very commonly. The most easiest way to raise kids is this. Did you know that? If it were to be $20, I would rip it off. It's $100, so I can. <laughs> this is a very easy way. That's why parents and adults, and maybe we all, focus too much on money. We believe giving money to our kids will raise them well. I know some of the parents working so hard for their kids to make money to support them. But I witnessed so many remnants are following a different thing. I realized this cannot guarantee future generation. And this has never guaranteed your future. This is not God. Amen. Should I repeat? <laughs> Later if I more. <laughs> this is not God. God is Christ. That is the answer. The way to raise our remnants is Christ alone. This might be given to them, might not be given to them. It doesn't matter. I was raised from a household where our parents couldn't even buy banana. There was a time my mom brought me to the marketplace. And she went there to buy uh, bean sprout, bean sprout, which is only 50 cents. If you bought 50 cents of bean sprout, you can our family, our family is only three, me, my dad, and my mom. We can all be filled with soup, like bean sprout soup and rice, right? And then I, I, I didn't remember my mom told me. And I, I, I saw some other kid with her, his mom, ask his mom, mom, can I buy the banana? And that mom just had the banana in his hand and gave him, and they were happy. And I asked my mom, mom, can I have the banana? And my mom said, no, I cannot. Why? 
because we only have 50 cents. If I buy you this, me and my, your, um, me and my husband will be starving. <laughs> so I can't. And that's when my mom told me she realized if this happened again and again, I might be obsessed with money. That's when my mom realized. And my mom that time told me, Johan, this is our God's sovereignty right now. It's not that God cannot give you so that you cannot buy banana. God gave us this time to realize what God really desires. Isn't that a good education? Instead of my mom start to go out, okay, I'll work to buy you banana. Right? We were suffering a lot. <laughs> Isn't that so pathetic? If my mom's working so hard 24-7 just to buy me a banana and saying, that, here you go. Is that really an education? No, the education is God has planned from your poverty right now. He had you going through this. So that has never become my scar. That's not my scar at all. We might be poverty. If you're poverty spiritually, that's a disaster. Poverty money is really nothing. Even beggars living outside without money. Why are you so worried about not having money? And why are we so obsessed with this money to raise our kids well? Let us teach our kids what we experience. We experience this gospel right now where we are. And we, we pray to God holding on to God's absolute sovereignty. That was the conclusion of our message. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 33. 1 to 9. Jeremiah is being uh, accused, and he was actually, um, he was suffered by his own people, Israelites, because he's been keep telling Israelites that you guys will go colonize to the Babylon. You guys will worship Babylon. You guys will go under Babylon. Jeremiah keep telling them what's going to happen in the future. So Israel didn't really like Jeremiah. So they shut him up in the court. But let's look at what God says. The word of God. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time while he was still shut up in the court of the guard. Thus says the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Are you shut up in your court? Are you shut up in your problems? Is it a time of suffering? Or proclaiming Christ. Is God with you? Or is he losing you? Is he forgetting you? He's with you. He's telling you. Call to me again. Jeremiah's been telling Israel. This is what will happen to you guys. But they shut him up. So that Jeremiah can't speak anymore. They shut him up. So that they don't want to hear Jeremiah anymore. There Jeremiah received what? Received the word of God. He received God's desire. And he began to pray. And God added the word after that. Let's read starting from 6. Behold, I will bring to it health and healing. And I will heal them and reveal to them abundance of prosperity and security. I will restore the fortunes of the Judah and the fortunes of Israel and rebuild and rebuild them as they were at first. I will cleanse them from all the guilt of their sin against me. And I will forgive all the guilt of their sin and rebellion against me. And this city shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and glory before all the nations of the earth. Who shall hear of all the good that I do for them. They shall fear and tremble because of all the good and all the prosperity I provide for it. Amen. People will all know what God has done to you. So can we bless each other? You are the witness of Jesus. And can we bless them? That's why you're going through what you're going through. And again, bless them. That's how much you are so blessed. So throughout this week, remnants and all, all the remnants and evangelists, from where you are now, today, holding on to God's sovereignty and let us all pray. Let God change our spiritual DNA. Let's take his blessing as a blessing 
not as problem. It's a blessing. Take that as blessing. Enjoy the gospel. Break all the force of darkness. And let you be successful raising the remnants to continue this gospel movement after you and after you and after you. Over the United States and over 237 nations. And extend to 5,000 people group. Let us have time of prayer and let us all praise.
the grace of Jesus Christ, the true king who destroyed the work of Satan, the true priest who set us free from sin, the true prophet who is a way to meet God. And the love of our Father God that is unending, unceasing, that cannot be blocked, but that is everlasting. And indwelling and guidance, the working of the Holy Spirit that is guaranteed to those who inherit salvation. Now all the trying in God, the blessing of the trying in God upon the head of the remnant, upon the head of the evangelist, now and forever. 